Novak Djokovic loses early in Rome. He loses to Alejandro Tobio. It's a big shock for the tournament. But the question everyone's asking, is the bottle to blame? That's right. Novak Djokovic, a big shock exit in Rome. And he loses to number 29 in the world, Alejandro Tobio. Tobio played really well today, I think, but it is a massive shock in the tournament. Djokovic, with all of the other absentees in the tournament, no Alcalaz, no Sinner, Rafa Nadal out of the tournament. He was expected to be the one to go on and maybe take this title in Rome, but it hasn't turned out that way, has it? It looks like now it's going to be one of the other candidates, maybe a Sissipas, maybe somebody else will come to the forefront and win this Rome title now. But the big question, JG, like you were saying, this bottle is getting a lot of talk. Or oh, did Djokovic just bottle it today? Oh, you're stealing my line. <laughs> I said that before, Ben. That's, <laughs> that's cruel. Um, but before we get on to the bottle, let's speak about what Tobio was able to do. He beat Djokovic 6-2, 6-3. It was just over an hour. It was round three of Rome. And it's now Novak's earliest ever defeat in Rome and the first time he has failed to make a single final heading into Roland Garros since 2018. Tobio didn't even have to face a break point. It was one-way traffic. He was dominated, quite frankly, Novak Djokovic. Uh, the first set started off really quickly. He was four love up. He double-faulted on three break points. I believe on both set points he, he double-faulted as well. He looked very out of character, out of sorts. A little bit like how we saw him against Yannick Sinner at the Australian Open. Um, we put a lot of that down to how Yannick Sinner played. Is that just a case of Djokovic is more prone to these off days nowadays? Or is it the bottle? I don't know. I mean, it it's becoming a little bit of a concern for me at the moment. I know that there's been a lot of highlight on Rafael Nadal, it being his final year. Obviously, we've now had more in retirements from Andy Murray announcing. We've had Dominic Team now announcing. Diego Schwartzman. There's been lots of people all coming out, long stairs on the tour, saying this is their final year on the tour. And based upon Djokovic's year last year, no one had thought he would have the year he's having this year. Uh, it, it's crazy. I, I thought... He's going to be fine. I mean, he won three slams last year. Surely he'll be in contention for most things this year. But it just hasn't played out that way. And there's part of me feeling like, is this now a sign of Djokovic maybe showing a little bit of his age now as well? Is it more difficult to get going? Are these small little factors now like big factors, like things that are a small distraction can maybe become a bigger distraction for him on a tennis court and his body is such a finely tuned machine like we had over all of the whole covid thing and not wanting to put things in his body not wanting the smallest thing to disrupt his rhythm it seems that the smallest things do upset novak djokovic and like put him off his game because you saw clearly today it wasn't really a gray djokovic and we've seen that a few times this year from him I do feel we need to put this into perspective and nobody has spoken about this from what I've seen on social media or any videos I've watched. And that is, who is Alejandro Tobio? And the reason I think that's significant is he is someone who's in good form at the moment. He's at his new, new career high. So he's playing his best tennis in the world. He's 29th in the world. Yeah. Let's put that into perspective. That is higher than the likes of Cam Norrie, Massetti, Draper, uh, Struff, who just won a tournament. Players we talk about a lot. Yeah. Maybe we don't speak about Tobio too, too much, uh, so much, but this is his time of year. These courts, I feel like he's going to play better than any. He'll love a nice clay court in Rome. He's also going to love Roland Garros as well, so he's going to be someone who you're going to want to avoid. And you can see who he's beaten. Hanfman, really good clay court. Beat Minar in the Challenger final comfortably. He bageled Bagnis. He's playing extremely well, and he's a top player who's playing his best tennis of his career. So let's just note that. He also had a fantastic performance. He didn't make many unforced errors. He hit winners at big moments. And there was times when I thought Djokovic was growing into the match in the second set. 
Uh, I know he took the early break, but he was sort of love 15 down on his serve. Djokovic hit a really good drop shot. Tabio come in and put away a fantastic sliding shot, uh, sort of past Djokovic cross court. And they, they're the moments you need to be able to turn up. And that's what he did. He turned up in big moments, showed his clay court uh, pedigree and how good he is sliding around the court. And his serve was good. He was hitting big shots. And he's playing great. So let's just remember that before we speak about Novak Djokovic. With regards to why Djokovic lost, let's hear from him. Let's hear what he had to say first. And we'll go through the quotes because this is <laughs> very interesting. This is not actually one. Well. This was um, no. <laughs> this was what I wanted you to read out, but it's quite funny anyway. I was going to trick you. My plan was I was going to get you to read this one out. And then you get so confused reading it, and then I'd make make fun of you. But since that's not going to happen, I'm going to read it out and say, Tabio played great, and I didn't. Don't disrespect me when Galileo want to be used as a bottle to test gravity on your head, and your haircut is historically as thin as the Australian Open's field. You are not 100%. I was seeing pyramids where the Colosseum was. Next. That's not what he did say, but that's quite funny. Um, that, what he actually good... said... <laughs> I mean that that, that is uh, a genius, like made up quote. Let's just say from uh, somebody who's just having a bit of fun. My, my hope was that you was gonna read that one out, and then you just be like, "Did he? Did he say that?" <laughs> well, it's lucky I watched the uh, <laughs> press conference just before we came on. Uh. So right, we go to the uh, actual thing that was said. Now, uh, here we go. So this is what was said. Well, this was him, if you go up a little bit, this is in relation to the bottle. He was asked other questions about his performance. He did congratulate to be able to start the press conference. But when he was asked, asked about the bottle incident, were you feeling anything from what happened on Friday night? He said, I don't know, to be honest. I have to check that. Training was different. I was going for kind of an easy training session. I didn't feel anything, but I also didn't feel the same. Today, under high stress, it was quite bad. Not in terms of pain, but in terms of this balance. Just no coordination. Complete different player from what it was two nights ago. Could be. I don't know. I'll have to do the medical checkups and see what's going on. Let's pause there because I've got a few questions mm. to pose to you. He's referencing the lack of balance. He's also saying how he's not had any medical checkups yet, so he doesn't know for for certain. This all sounds to me like the effects of concussion. Would you say that's fair? Well, I'm glad you said that because I've just literally Googled concussion and symptoms. So we'll bring those up now <laughs> and we can have a quick look at that. So we've got here confusion, headache, dizziness, nausea, Loss of balance, uh, feeling stunned or dazed, disturbances with vision, such as double vision, blurred vision, or seeing stars or flashing lights as well. So I'm sure there's a few more on there, but they're the main ones on that list. So it's, it's hard to say. I mean, this is one of those hard things, isn't it? I mean, when it's happened to somebody, it's like saying how injured is somebody in anything. It's definitely an easy opportunity to use if you've just not played a good match and the bottle incident's just happened Djokovic is a very smart guy I'm sure he knows the symptoms of concussion or he would have looked at it online and this comes up and this is what he then says in the press conference for me that doesn't verify that he has concussion he's just listed the, the symptoms of it who's to know what is true and what isn't true and I'm I, I know there's going to be so many comments coming for me just by saying that alone um but from what I saw of the bottle incident, I don't think it was as dramatic as what he made out. I don't think it would have caused as much damage. I don't think it would have affected his performance. I'm no doctor. I know I'm going to upset people by saying this, but this is what I'm here to do. And that's tell my opinion. There's going to be some people who would agree with me. And for that, I'm going to say it. So who is knows? More, is there more of like a another side of things let's like try and not look at it from a way of concussion but more of distraction away from actual the actual tennis because Djokovic would have liked to have come to Rome would have liked to have just got his matches out the way and would have liked to have just got on with business this has been something which has just happened after his first match and there's been a lot made of it there's a lot of media surrounding this incident which 
probably doesn't really need, to be honest. I mean, he much would have preferred to have finished the match, signed an autograph, gone back, and then just had none of this because this has been all like a sideshow which is going on in the background before his next match. Maybe that's playing a pa and playing a factor. I mean, the fact he came out and he tried to make a joke of it, all of this type of thing. Yeah, it's great, but it's all the, all a bit of a distraction as well, away from the tennis. And maybe he wasn't practicing. Maybe it was a precaution. All of this type of thing. If it hadn't have happened, even if it wasn't that bad, the precautions that he put in place and not training maybe as hard as he maybe would have, he didn't really seem to hit any winners today. That was it. Maybe a drop shot. Just no power in shots. It just to be I play really well, but Djokovic normally digs in a bit deeper. I think. The reason why I am not putting this down to the bottle is many reasons, but one of them, the main ones being, I've, this is not the first time I've seen Djokovic perform like this this year. I think he's not been playing very well all year. He's not reached a single final, and there's been some question mark performances when he's played. So I'm not that surprised. I had him going out in the next round to Surundalo. I know Surundalo's not there, it was Hachanov now, but I didn't expect him to go far in Rome. I don't expect him to go far in a lot of events. I don't think he's producing that that good of tennis. The way he lost to Sinner at the Australian Open, I'm going to go back to it, was really poor. And Sinner's a fantastic player, don't get me wrong. But Djokovic did, just looked so out of sorts. He looked so out of sorts against Nardi as well. There's been a few different situations where he's not looked right. He really hasn't. Yeah. Um, obviously, the main one against Sinner, I mean... You can't take it away from Sinner, but Djokovic definitely wasn't on his A game that day. The Nardi one, pff, not sure how he managed to lose to Nardi, to be honest. The the Casper Rude one. It's I even mean, the ones he's won sometimes. I've not, I've not been so impressed. Yeah, I'm. Pff, it does worry me. Uh, I've, I know that we're looking in the wake of Rafa on the Dow's final year, but it, the way that Djokovic has been playing this year, it, it hasn't filled me with confidence. Um, I've started I just, just feel if if a bottle hits you on the head, and it inf and it impacts your game that much, then it's a fine tuned machine. Don't forget. I, I know what you're saying, that. but this is a this is a proper athlete. This is one of the greatest we've ever seen. I don't think that would that should play too much of an influence. Even if it uh, you had a little bump on his head, it wasn't that it wasn't that fast or that dramatic where it's going to really damage him or give him concussion. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell because like, it's the same. So are you like, saying he's concussed? I don't know. There's no way of telling. That's the yeah. problem. This, yeah. is the, this is the world we live in now. Like, if an athlete has a problem or if anybody has a problem, you could even say there's a lot of people struggling with, like, mental health and stuff. How do you know that people are actually struggling when they're not struggling? Like, people say things. You have to take it on face value. Like, you can't say, oh, Naomi Osaka's fine. Well... She's saying she's not fine. She needs to take time away from the court. So we believe her. That that type of thing. It's like it's you have to believe the athlete because otherwise, if we stop believing them, then what sort yeah. of world are we living in? I think that's the yeah. the key here. But hopefully, Djokovic is all right, and I just want to see him back playing some good tennis again. That's the main thing I'm missing because. While we're missing Rafael Nadal playing well, I sort of hoped that Djokovic would see this and see Sinner and Alcaraz out and be like, wow, this is my opportunity now. Look, I can show everybody. I'm just going to go nick a, nick a few more t titles. Uh, Roland Garros is mine. Now I'm not sure. So let's uh, assess the different reasons we've given so far. Number one, bad day in the office, off day. Number two, concussed and struggled um with the effects of concussion, dizziness, lack of balance. Number three, the bottle incident and how big it's been. It's taken, absorbed him a little bit, like you said, and maybe distracting from his tennis. I'm going to present you number four right now, cool. and that is from Tennis in the Park. So let's add that one. And they wrote, maybe yesterday, Djokovic showed up in a helmet to make a silly, slight gag. Later that day, Rafael Nadal walked out to the most epic, passionate and wholehearted send-off in sporting history. Over 15,000 fans waiting outside for him. Djokovic realised he would never clear that and something just shut off inside of him. This is number four. What do you think of this theory? Interesting. Does it have any legs for you? I don't think that he'll be looking into it. I think that when he retires, there will be... 
adoring fans, maybe not as many in Rome, but definitely in other cities around the world. So I know that Rafa's what, what obviously cities? won it. Rafa's obviously won it 10 times. So it's pretty crazy. Well, I'm sure if Djokovic, when he retires in Australia, it's going to be pretty like epic. Like his last Australian Open ever. Or there Wimbledon. Was be, yeah, or Wimbledon as well. But then there's always that same thing as well. There's Roger's got more Wimbledons than him. But it's one of those. There's, he's still got a good fan base in London, I'd say. In got, Rome, it, def, it seems like I, I think he was Rafa being jeered it. even today. He's not that popular. He's been yeah. playing there for a lot of years. And he's won quite a few titles, but yet not that popular in Rome. I wonder if it did affect him slightly, knowing that Rafa got so much love there this time round. And a big incident happened with him. He was wearing his helmet, and and still he didn't get maybe the same, the same level of love. But this is just theory number four. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with one, two, three, or four, or if you've got your very own one put other and give us your theory to, to do with Djokovic's loss. I'm more edging towards number one, which is him having an off day and not producing his tennis. I don't think it's any of the others, but what about you? Where are you edging so far? I'm sort of between number one and uh, the one I was saying, like this whole distraction. I feel like Rafa is, a part, is in part of that as well. I mean, off-court things are distracting. Like this Rafa thing could be a part of it. I think and that's silly though, Ben, because he's a, He's been playing for so many years. I don't think anything really distracts no, of it. No, but I don't even mean like the Rafa. He's experienced. The, I, don't, I don't mean the Rafa thing with the big crowds, but I think the fact that it is... And he's Rafa's, used to crowds going against him. It only helps him. The fact it's Rafa's send-off year, I feel that there's there might be something just inside him that is that it's a rival of his, which is leaving the tour and not leaving it in a very like big blaze of glory really it's like it's a bit of a sad send-off i don't know if if this might be affecting Djokovic as well you don't know like this is like you saw what happened with McEnroe and Borg and all that type of thing when your greatest rivals disappear you sort of lose something inside yourself as well so i don't know if that's what could be happening to Djokovic as well maybe he sees one of his best rival his biggest ever rival getting walloped by her catch and maybe shocked maybe that's i don't know you never know do you like this different things affect people in different ways but it's just another thing to put out there. <laughs> well i've got number five for you ben <laughs> and this one's from scott okay this is maybe one of my I'll favorite ones well, but i don't think it's that likely there may be someone who agrees with number five in the comment section. Please do yeah. let us know. I'm fascinated to hear what you have to say. Go and on. this is Scott saying, we are now one step away from people questioning whether or not Rafael Nadal paid someone uh, to pay someone to lean over the side of the barricade and with the aim of an M16 agent or M M was it? M MI6, six. sorry, MI6 agent, slip the bottle out of their bag over the shoulder and hit Novak Djokovic on the head with it. Is it a paid per? Is it a paid MI6 agent? I don't know. There's been so so much chat about all this, and they're like that same person was at another event where they were. I've seen them as well. I don't. I don't know whether to believe any of this stuff. To be honest, I think it's all just hearsay. Who's proven any of these facts as well? I think that I like. Someone was saying that this guy was at some political march or something against um, against Serbia. I've seen all sorts, Ooh. mate. Like, there's so many different crazy yeah, theories. I don't know where this, where, this is number five, anyway, just to give everyone a, a fair, fair shot of what they think. Yeah, let's finish what uh, we saw Djokovic's yeah. quote. Anyway, we just finished the second part of what he was saying, where they said, "Can you tell us more? Uh, what happened the night uh, where you received the bottle, and how did you understand it?" Novak said, I mean, I think in the video, you saw it clearly. It was a very unfortunate, unlucky situation. It was an accident where the guy leaned over, the bottle dropped from his rucksack, and it landed directly on my head. It was <laughs> unexpected, obviously. I wasn't even looking up, and then I felt very strong hit in the head. That has really impacted me a lot. After I got the medical care and uh, been through half an hour... Uh, and an hour of nausea, dizziness, blood, and a different, a lot of different things. I managed to sleep okay, had bad headaches. The next day or yesterday was pretty fine, so I thought it was okay. Maybe it's okay, maybe it's not. 
I mean, after the way I felt on the court, it was just completely a different player. Entered into my shoes, no rhythm, no tempo, no balance whatsoever on any shot. It's a bit concerning. So, yeah, that's pretty much what he came up uh, to the press conference and said. Yeah. And you just have to just take it on face value that he's telling the truth, I guess. Yeah, and based on that, he would. he's implying that he suffered with some concussion. He's not said that word for word. He's going to wait for no. the medical yeah. uh, examiners to determine that. But in essence, it's thrown him off his balance and he doesn't. He feels a completely different person to what he did pre-bottle incident. So that's his take on it all. So I he's more edging towards number two. It must feel a bit like that. Like Even if someone does come on the court and plays out their skin and like literally played him off the court, to be fair, to be a... So there's no harm in that. But when you have someone of Djokovic's level and that incident has just happened... It does, probably does just feel like, how did that just happen? How does that mm. guy just beat me off the court like that? He's not really on my level and I should be beating him easily. So then it probably plays in your mind a bit like, I did just have that bottle thing on my head. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it could. It's like when a player gets injured, once they lose the match, the injury feels so much more like painful than when... Yeah, same that. with dodgy calls as well, for instance, with the umpire. It always plays on your mind a lot more if you are to lose. If you win, it's all forgotten. Same exactly. with injuries. Looking at what Patrick McEnroe had to say, all right. he sums it up quite nicely with the state of play of Roland Garros around the corner. Rome, obviously, a great event just before Roland Garros. The courts play quite similar. And this is where we're at. So Sinner out of an injury. Alcaraz out of an injury. Nadal only wins four games. Djokovic only wins five games. The French open plot thickens. We've then got Sissipas, Verev, Rue, Dimitrov, Runa. I mean, who's going to win Rublev? Roland Garros? Oh, Rublev. Are we going to see a very unknown name win the tournament? I think it's really possible. I, I, I think, think out of any other years, usually the slams is won by the big names. Every single year, it's Nadal, Djokovic, Medvedev, Alcaraz, now Sinner. No one else wins the slams on the men's. Yeah. I think we're going to get someone completely different. It feels like that more than ever. And with how it's building up to it, it's certainly possible. Of course, the Yank Sinner could be fully fit and he'll be favourite. He's definitely his favourite based off what we've seen recently anyway. Yeah, you would, you would think so. But then you'd have to say that there are the likes of Zverev. He looked very good today. Um and Sissipas, if he continues, like I mean, he beat Jan Leonard Struff, which is not an easy matchup. So if he continues, he could, if he goes on to win Rome, you'd have to consider someone like a Sissipas. Obviously, Rude's gone straight out. That was a terrible pick by me to get to the final, but he lost to Ketsmanovic. Yeah, well, I, I get a lot of criticism, but I tell you what, guys, I'm going to be right in this event. Holgeruna and Dimitrov are going to get to the final. I'm going to call the finalists. And it's a crazy two selections. Not many people have had it. And I think it's really possible. Wow. Dimitrov looks really good still. Yeah. I think Runa and Dimitrov have a great shot of uh, getting to the final. What do you make of the fact that, well, looking at the race, I think everyone's sort of overlooking Daniel Medvedev as well. Obviously, he's carrying two injuries uh, into this tournament. But... He said that they're one of them's okay, and they're monitor. He said the shoulder one's always a problem, but they're just always monitoring it. So I think Ray Daniel Rayleigh Medvedev Trump. is one nobody's talking about, and if he gets his injuries in check, he could be one to watch out for at the French Open as well. So this is the, the, that's the one person that they've just omitted from the list. He's the current champion, like he said in Rome, and. Just a bit of a sneaker. I think he could sneak through and surprise a few people. Yeah. But you never know. Anyway, I've got a couple more tweets. I know that you've uh, pinged over this one as well. Yes, this is Djokovic's loss today. Also means that Sinner will have a big, big lead on the fight for number one at Roland Garros. Djokovic will lose more points than Yannick Sinner did. Not by much, but the difference is Djokovic had a good chance to gain on... Uh, his mm. position and, and make it difficult for Sinner to become world number one at Roland Garros. That's not the case anymore. And Sinner has a real good shot. What do you what do you make of the the ATP race at the moment? Not the actual ranking. The race. This is what it, the race is right now. 
Who's leading? Sinner. It's got to be. Sinner, Medvedev, Rude. I'm surprised Rude's in third. Zverev, Rublev, Sister Pasal, Klas, Dimonor, Dimitrov. I'll be honest. I'm surprised Dimitrov's ninth. I thought he was higher. I'm surprised Sister Pass is as high as sixth. And I'm surprised Rude's as high as three. I know you're Apart surprised. From that, I'm Djokovic stat- isn't even on the screen. No, oh no, obviously not. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, he's not. He's not. He's not got to a final. He's not really played very well. There we go. Quick one. I'm I surprised think. he's so high as twelve. Yeah. So I mean, Tsitsipas obviously won Monte Carlo. So that's why. Yeah. Uh, massive. Uh, that gave points, him the big so. boost. Before that, I don't think he was so close. But who's Djokovic on the fringes just... in that twenty? Yeah. Navona. <laughs> <No, laughs> Tabio, look at him. He's having a great year. Nineteenth best player in, in this this season so far. Exactly, and could do even better uh, if he goes on in this tournament. He has a really good opportunity now. Obviously, the top half of the draw has massively opened up now. He faces Hachanov in the next round for a place in the quarterfinals, and we will have them playing the winner of Montero or Zhang. So the winner of Montero or Zhang will be a quarterfinalist in this, and one out of Tobio, Hachanov, Zhang and Montero will be a semi-finalist in Rome. So Zhang's really impressed me. Montero has been great as well. So yeah, fully deserved. They played some great tennis today. Match you're really going to be loving in the next round as well. The round of sixteen, Zverev Nuno Borges in the yep. next round. That one, I cannot wait to see that. And Fritz Dimitrov. So we'll see if Fritz can knock out your man Dimi. I hope not. I'm round. giving it the big one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, th- I think that that's. Uh, all we've uh, all we've got on the tweet side of things, so we'll probably should just wrap this one up. Perfect. Nice. Right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Let us know your thoughts on Novak Djokovic going out so early in Rome. What do you put it down to? One, two, three, or four, or five? If anyone's got five, you're nuts. Um, I'm going to stick with number one. Ben's going to go for a mix of a few, but let us know your thoughts below. The one thing we do know for certain is Djokovic is out of Rome, and now it's an open field. Things looking very open as well for Roland Garros. Rafael Nadal, his days are numbered. I think he's got less than five games left of his career. And I don't see him doing anything at Roland Garros, quite frankly. Um, But that's my thoughts. Let me know yours. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and go check us out on Spotify as well. That's it. We'll bring the countdown back tomorrow as well. So make sure to join us for that too. And we will be trying to bring you some of the women's in Rome. Our all of next week. See them.